Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2019 State of the University Address. We appreciate you being here with us today. I am Dr. Linda Ruyard, President of the University of Toledo's Faculty Senate, an elected body that serves as the voice of our faculty and helps to promote the mission of our institution. Since President Gaber arrived here nearly four years ago, her leadership has had a transformative impact on the university's culture. Not only has she herself served as a model of rocket pride, accessibility, and transparency, her example has spread throughout the campus community. Our students know that they belong here and they have a supportive yet rigorous learning environment preparing them for the careers of tomorrow. Our faculty know that Dr. Gaber's door is always open and that her tireless focus on student success guides our curriculum and research priorities. And our alumni and supporters know that their investments in us will be rewarded many times over as we bring new talents, innovation, and technologies to our region and to the world. Today, we as a community are able to celebrate the positive energy and momentum of the last year because of the strong foundation set forth in our strategic plan and the collaborative leadership style of Dr. Gaber. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored and privileged to introduce the 17th president of the University of Toledo, Dr. Sharon Gaber. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Rulliard, for the introduction and for your leadership of Faculty Senate. On behalf of the senior leadership team, I want to thank Faculty Senate for all of their work this year. We're joined today by current and former members of our Board of Trustees, all of whom volunteer their time because they're invested in this institution's future. We thank you for all that you do. City of Toledo Mayor Wade Kapsikavich is represented here today, and to all of our community leaders, we appreciate you being here. We are so proud to be Toledo's university, and I'm excited to talk about our continued partnership on so many critical issues. And to our amazing students, faculty, physicians, and staff, to all supporters of the University of Toledo and Rocket Nation, your innovation and dedication are the pillars of our campus community. Thank you for your ongoing support. On behalf of our entire community, 
I'm excited you all have joined us as the university takes its next steps forward. This annual event is an opportunity to celebrate achievements of the past year, as well as the exciting new paths that lie ahead. As one of the most comprehensive public universities in the nation, offering degree programs in all seven professional fields of business, education, engineering, law, medicine, nursing, and pharmacy, we're a driving force in the region and a catalyst for progress throughout Ohio, the nation, and beyond. Above all else, today is a celebration of the people who showcase the exciting future of our great institution, the University of Toledo. Our students are translating knowledge they've learned in the classroom into action at leading companies like Google. They're volunteering in European refugee camps and right here at home. Our Fulbright scholars are studying women's housing issues, child abuse prevention, peace education, and music literacy around the world. And our staff are consistently honored for their years and even decades of outstanding service toward fulfilling our mission. This year, we've welcomed several new senior leaders and academic officials to our team. They are student-focused, outcome-driven, and have really hit the ground running. Please stand and be recognized as I call your name. Jim Anderson is our new Vice President for Enrollment Management. Dr. Adrian King has joined us as Associate Vice President of Marketing and Communications. Dr. Ann Bayless is our Dean of the College of Business and Innovation. Dr. Raymond Witte is Dean of the Judith Herb College of Education. And we recently named Dr. Gary Pollack to lead the College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences beginning in August. Join me in a University of Toledo welcome for our newest senior leaders. In the last several months, we've seen tremendous results and outcomes that can be traced directly back to our strategic plan. It was collaboratively designed with stakeholders from our community, including many of the people in this room. From the beginning, we knew that our plan would not live on a bookshelf, but that we would consistently track our progress and adjust our approach over time. Our campus community has embraced this vision for the future, and we continue to live it in our daily work. It's because of you that the achievements of the last year were possible. The people in our campus community have fueled our momentum throughout the last year. You are the reason we're the university of choice for so many seeking higher education. Today I'll share our focus in three main areas. First, we're committed to our students' success. Second, we're advancing knowledge through groundbreaking research. And third, we're making progress as reflected in our growing national reputation. We said we were going to, and we are, living our mission, vision, and values, as well as making significant progress on our strategic plan. We're making an impact today and fueling tomorrow's. As Toledo's university, we're proud to be an integral part of our city and our surrounding communities. Our friends and family are spirited supporters of Rocket Nation. In addition to the degrees many of us hold, we all know someone whose parents or children are also proud graduates. Our future is this city's future. I'm proud of where the University of Toledo is and where we're headed. Student success is and remains our number one priority. Our collaborative culture and student-first mindset are helping to reimagine efforts to recruit, retain, and graduate future generations of Rocket alumni. These recent proof points demonstrate our commitment to these efforts. This past fall, we welcomed the best academically prepared class of first-year students in university history with an average GPA of 3.45. The number of students who return to campus for their second year has been climbing for six consecutive years 
and our first to second year retention rate is now the highest it has ever been. And most importantly, we're projecting that our six year graduation rate will be at an all time high following commencement next month. This means we are on track to reach our strategic plan target graduation rate three years ahead of schedule. Our national reputation continues to grow, including a dramatic rise in the recent graduate school rankings from US News and World Report. These followed other recent accolades for online programs and professor accessibility. We're proud of these rankings, but more importantly, the outcomes they represent in student success, program quality, and accomplished faculty. Last fall, we were selected by the Association of Public and Land-Grant Universities in Washington, D.C. to serve in an ambitious national coalition called Powered by Publics. The goal is to improve college access and award hundreds of thousands more degrees across the country by 2025, and we're excited to be a part of this effort. These are only some of the facts and figures that show our positive trajectory. There are names and faces behind all of them, living proof that our collective talents and energy are making a real difference. We're on a mission to help students succeed, but we realize that the word success can translate in different ways for a student body as rich and diverse as ours. Some have their sights on succeeding academically. For others, success can mean being able to focus in class without being hungry completing a semester as the first in their family to attend college, or learning the nuances of a new country and culture. The University of Toledo not only recognizes, but embraces these different perspectives and is empowering all of our students to thrive. One great example of rocket determination is Lovely Forges. Lovely is a senior majoring in economics with a 3.7 GPA. She's originally from Haiti, the youngest of seven children, and while she speaks four languages, her initial interest in coming to the United States was to study English. She first connected with us at the age of 14 when she met our Learning Through Service class led by Dr. Sammy Spann, who travels to Haiti each year. That class eventually helped support Lovely's journey to the university where she took advantage of the American Language Institute in our Center for International Studies and Programs. She has since developed a talent for accounting, completed the Clark Leadership Academy a few weeks ago, and we will be proud to count her among our alumni when she graduates next month. She's right over here. <laughs> Another student success story is Justin Tapp, who will graduate with our bachelor's degree in disability studies during May commencement. We were the first in the country to offer an on-campus undergraduate degree in disability studies. One of our programs of distinction, it was developed in close collaboration with the Ability Center of Toledo and enrolled its first majors in 2015. This semester, Justin is working as a policy fellow at Respectability in Washington, D.C. His passion, discovered here in a program unique to our campus, is helping to bring critical issues to the attention of lawmakers. Justin is a great testament to how our program review and course design are inspiring new career paths and making a real difference. Have you been to the library lately? One of my favorite new additions is the mural of the University Hall Clock Tower created by students as part of the library's experiential learning initiative. Using a set of actual historic brass hands from the clock, Rose Mansell Platel and Tara Yarzun, both juniors in the Bachelor of Fine Arts program, created a wonderful mural that incorporates the names of university programs set in the mortar of our campus stone architecture. I think they're right over here. Did you want to stand? <laughs> 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 
part of ensuring the success of students like Lovely, Justin, Rose, and Tara is to provide a clear, accessible, and affordable path to graduation. I'm proud to announce that beginning next year, we'll be piloting two new advising models designed to increase student retention and timely graduation. While both retention and graduation rates are at all-time highs, we believe we can and must do all that we can, can to continue to ensure student success. The first model includes transitional advising for students changing majors and moving from one college to another. The second initiative will be a new health professions advising center designed to support students pursuing admission into a pre-professional health program such as nursing, medical school, physical therapy, or occupational therapy. And this is the first academic year of our tuition guarantee program, which provides a fixed tuition and fee rate for four years of undergraduate coursework. This represents our commitment to transparency and affordability for our students and their families. Its value cannot be overstated. Higher education continues to be called upon to demonstrate strong value and return on investment. The University of Toledo is indeed a great value. I'm proud to report that when you compare average annual salaries to student loan debt held after graduation, we are the most competitive public university of our size in Ohio. We are thrilled to see our young alumni capitalize on the success they experienced as students. Quinton Babcock graduated with honors in December and went right to work as the mayor of the village of Oak Harbor, Ohio. Quinton brings two bachelor's degrees to his civic leadership, one in economics and disability studies and one in mathematics. While in office, he's determined to improve the tr transparency, accessibility, and responsiveness of the village government. Another example is Margaret Gores, one of the first graduates of our unique cosmetic science program in the College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. She graduated last year and moved to New York to work for Estee Lauder, where she is an associate scientist creating the next generation of cosmetics. Our incredible student athletes are proving their excellence in competition as well as the classroom. I'm happy to say that after Rocket Football made a postseason trip to the Bahamas Bowl in December, both our men's and women's basketball teams recently followed suit with appearances in the National Invitation Tournament. In fact, with our first round win in the NIT, Coach Tricia Cullip became the university's all-time winningest women's basketball head coach with 241 career wins. Congratulations to Coach Cullip. Seven of our sports programs are leading the Mid-American Conference in four-year academic progress rate, and our student athletes just earned the second highest fall term GPA in school history. That marks the eighth consecutive semester in which our student athletes have earned a semester GPA of 3.2 or higher. And we're excited to announce that this August, we will bring women's soccer, the women's soccer program, to the heart of campus. The next step in our campus master plan, the new soccer field, will be located inside the track next to the Fetterman Training Center. We look forward to energizing student life with easier access to Rocket Athletics. Just as our athletes must train properly for competition, our students must also be in good health if they're to succeed academically. Campus hunger and food insecurity are challenges, challenges facing colleges nationwide. Students cannot concentrate on their studies if they're hungry. The new Rocket Fuel Food Recovery Program lets students enjoy a hot meal or take it to go. When there's leftover food following a catered campus event, this program texts participants to notify them to pick it up 
or share a meal with others. Since late February, more than 700 pounds of catered meals, such as baked chicken, salad, vegetables, and desserts, have been pro provided to students instead of going to waste, thanks to this innovative program supported by a grant from the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities. Our student food pantry is also ensuring students don't have to wonder where their next meal will come from. The pantry has provided meals and snacks to more than 2,000 students since it opened on campus in 2016. And the University of Toledo is a chapter of the Food Recovery Network, a student movement helping to fight food, waste, and hunger by donating unused food to local organizations. We are providing financial assistance to students when the unexpected happens. A short-term financial emergency should not derail a student's education. The Rocket Recovery Emergency Grant provides aid to undergraduate students at risk of dropping out due to unexpected financial emergencies. Students may request up to $1,000 for housing, food, medical expenses, transportation, and other non-tuition needs. For this relatively small expense, we're able to retain students who otherwise might not graduate. When we consider that on average, college graduates earn $1 million more in their lifetimes than those with only a high school diploma, this program is well worth that investment. We've also made forward-thinking investments in campus transportation the last few years, and those continue to pay off, especially now that spring is here. The Lime scooters have returned after a bitterly cold winter and have been a hit with more than 5,500 people logging some 19,000 miles at the university last fall. We had to double the number of scooters on the main campus to meet demand. And as further proof of their success, the scooters are now available on the health science campus. We continue to partner with TARDA and our rocket lift buses featuring our midnight blue and gold as they make loops across campus in the city each day. Bikes are also back with new bicycles added to the Rocket Wheels fleet thanks to a sponsorship by Walmart. There's now a tricycle, a tandem bike, and hand pedal bikes to accommodate persons with disabilities. And I'm excited to announce the newest innovation in campus transportation and outdoor recreation. Kayaks are coming to Ottawa River this fall. <laughs> the pedestrian bridge by Savage Arena is being replaced, which provided an opportunity to redesign the plaza on the north end overlooking the river. A launch point will be added where the Student Recreation Center will provide kayaks so that we can more fully enjoy the river that runs through our campus. Also coming soon is a new public safety building on the corner of Door and Secor. We're in the planning phase for the new home for the university's police department, which we hope will be ready by fall semester 2020. In addition, important services continue to be centralized. Our offices of human resources, risk management, and environmental health and radiation safety will be brought to main campus in the new Center for Administrative Support. Our students are active partners with our neighbors in the community. We truly are the city's university. Last academic year, our students collectively performed nearly 40,000 hours of community service. That time volunteering is in addition to the 380,000 hours given back each semester through experiential learning, such as student teaching, clinical rotations, and internships in our community. One of our alumni is helping to improve access and mobility of many different kinds, thanks in part to the students who volunteered during the big event just last month. Let's hear more. <laughs> I feel like Toledo is ripe for making a difference. 
I feel like there's kind of a lot of opportunity right now to make a, a lot of change. Um, there seems to be more stuff going on within the uh, city and there's lots of great organizations that are really trying to kind of make their mark on it. But really, we encourage everybody to learn how to work on their own bike, learn how to be involved with their bike and increasing their own accessibility. And then we do all sorts of programs. One program we're working on right now is with the juvenile court system, in which kids who have kind of come to brush with the court system, come to Toledo Bikes, learn how to fix up a bike, and at the end of the entire program, get to leave with a bicycle that they themselves have kind of fixed, put back together, and are now able to care for more. Being at UT and being at a school within a big city allows you to interact with a lot of people. There's always a lot of opportunities to help out around campus and be involved with the Toledo community. There are lots of uh, events that I participated in at school that kind of brought me downtown and to interact with the city. Um, so it's really, it's really kind of a fun project that we've uh, developed with the big event that allows us to kind of keep being involved every year. Um, and become something that we look forward to. The students have always been really great and really fun to work with and really are excited to work and help um, and kind of get their hands dirty. I'm glad that they give like the university students a chance to do it. It's great for like the student to be able to learn early about like giving back to the community and how they give so many like clubs a chance to do it. A lot of people at UT aren't from Toledo exactly so they get to see and experience Toledo. They get to see more than just the university, more than just the, you know, the common places that everyone goes. And I think it really just kind of inspires more people to get out there and do something, whether it's small or big. What a great story. The University of Toledo, through our innovative researchers, is making an impact in a wide range of academic disciplines. It's no coincidence that you're seeing more headlines about our exceptional faculty making great breakthroughs. Our experts are not only advancing discovery beyond what we thought possible, they're engaging our students in the process. Last year, we identified our areas of established research excellence. We're a leader in the areas of astronomy and astrophysics, solar energy, water quality and sustainable technologies, and cell architecture and dynamics. We also identified areas of unique distinction and emerging research excellence for future development as we continue to achieve national recognition for our contributions to advancing knowledge. I'm proud to announce that research grant submissions are at the highest level in five years. As an example of the success of these efforts, the U.S. Department of Energy recently awarded Dr. Yan Fa Yan a $1.1 million grant to advance solar energy. The cutting edge physicist will collaborate with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory to develop ultra high efficiency solar cells. Dr. Yan's team is raising the bar, nearly doubling the power conversion of the solar cells. Speaking of the Department of Energy, we will be hosting a National Lab Day this October, which will connect our researchers and students with scientists, facilities, and opportunities that are unique to some of the nation's most preeminent labs. The 17 Department of Energy National Laboratories perform leading edge research in the public interest. So this is truly a unique opportunity for our university community. Dr. Ajit Karunarethni's exploration of how blue light from computers, phones, and tablets is damaging our eyes reached more than 400 million people through media across the world, including Popular Science, USA Today, CNN, and Forbes. He was interviewed last month for a story in AARP magazine, which alone reaches another 38 million readers. His discovery was also selected as one of 2018's most talked about scholarly publications in the world. The ongoing efforts of Dr. Bina Joe to treat high blood pressure, 
is moving us closer to a cure for an issue that affects millions. We've long known that our genes can predispose us to hypertension, but only more recently, thanks in large part to the research of Dr. Joe's team in the Department of Physiology and Pharmacology, has the medical community begun to realize how the microorganisms living in our bodies play a role in that equation. By understanding and regulating those tiny organisms, it may be possible to prevent high blood pressure from ever developing. Dr. Joe and her talented researchers also recently found that the liver may be a target for regulating blood pressure, a wholly new concept that has opened the door to another potential route to treat hypertension. Congratulations. Every year, astronomers around the world vie for precious minutes of the, uh, of the view from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. Dr. Rupali Chandar not only won coveted observation time after the most competitive cycle in history, she leads the Space Telescope Users Committee. Dr. Chandar heads the group of 12 astrophysicists from around the world that act as the direct interface between astronomers who want to use the telescope and top-level management of the Hubble project. She is the second University of Toledo astronomer to lead this powerful committee. It's unusual for one university to have had more than one representative in the group, let alone two people who have led the committee's work. Our discoveries are having far-reaching impact. The Ohio Department of Transportation and other states around the country could save as much as $40 million on road improvements thanks to a team of our engineers who created a new procedure and design software to estimate the structural capacity of pavement. They were led by the person who crafted the original method 25 years ago. Dr. Eddie Chu, professor of civil and environmental engineering and director of the Transportation Systems Research Lab. In addition to being more environmentally friendly, the new method can save about $120,000 per mile of new pavement. Thanks to our comprehensive approach to research, we're seeing laboratory concepts become realities. After more than a decade of experiments and study, two of our dedicated specialists in medicine and endocrinology developed a new way to replicate type 1 diabetes in lab mice. This breakthrough research has the potential to reshape how diabetes is studied and how potential therapies are tested and developed. Dr. Juan Haume and collaborator Dr. Shanawaz Imam are now using the new mouse model in studies, including one that looked at how a certain protein can influence T cells in the pancreas to delay the onset of diabetes. Just last month, they were invited to a global conference to present their mouse model to leading endocrinologists. We're all hopeful their work at the University of Toledo will prove an important step toward finding a cure for diabetes. Thank you. The Great Lakes are a crucial natural resource, and our entire state has a vested interest in keeping Lake Erie's water clean and safe. The University of Toledo is leading the way in that effort, thanks to our faculty and our students. The Lake Erie algal bloom. Toledo residents upset over the toxic lake. Toledo, one of the state's largest cities. Hundreds of thousands of people without tap water over the weekend. I had like a 22 mile run that day and you know I go through the metro park system and go through the water fountains you know I got like six miles in big black plastic trash bag on a water okay it must be it's broken one another five or six miles there was another one that had a black plastic bag over it I was so thirsty right so I just ripped it open and drank and then I got home and my wife had left a message that you can't drink the water at that time I thought algae were plants it turns out they're not they're photosynthesizing bacteria um, I think like a lot of people, we didn't know much about the toxin at that time either. So a lot of us started looking into the structure of the toxin. Um, we really started 
diving into questions about why do those cyanobacteria produce the toxin? What does the toxin do? Um, how can we remove it from the water? How can we safely remove it from the water? In theory, there's bacteria that have adapted to using that toxin as an energy source. So that's the original principle. The thing about our bacteria is they're naturally from the lake. We haven't genetically engineered or modified them. They just naturally eat and degrade the toxin. We also know that the water treatment plant um, has these monster biological filters. I mean, they have you know, 30 some filters that are bigger than this room that filter mil millions of gallons of water every day and they're biologically active anyway. So we just wanna give them additional biologically active bacteria which can just degrade the toxin. And I carried out a lot of the experiments and would get together with Jason and we'd you know, go over results and see what was working and what wasn't working. But I was definitely looking for research where I felt like I was making an impact and I was helping the community. And so obviously working with Lake Erie, that affects not only me, but like all my families in Toledo, all my friends, you know, I grew up here. When we first joined the graduate program, each of the professors comes in and Jason came in and talked about this project. And I was like, that sounds exactly like what I'm looking for. It's, it's helping me, it's helping everybody else, it's improving water quality and having a positive impact on, you know, the city that I live in. It's so rewarding to see our research making an impact here at home on such a crucial issue. At the University of Toledo, we are outcome driven and work together to advance our great institution and the communities that we serve. Our success fuels our momentum. We're a leader in healthcare, advancing knowledge and discovery through our research and training the next generation of medical professionals while providing outstanding service for our patients. The academic affiliation between ProMedica and our College of Medicine and Life Sciences, which began in 2015, is transforming medical education, research, and the biomedical industry in our region. The most recent match day, when our fourth year medical students learn where they will perform their residencies, highlights that success as we attract and keep talented practitioners in our region. And we've become a training destination for medical students graduating from other schools across the country. Meanwhile, our hardworking physicians, nurses, and clinicians at UTMC are committed to the mission of community-focused, patient-centered care. We recognize the devastating impact of the opioid crisis and have accepted the challenge to address this local and national health emergency on a number of fronts. Later this week, we'll host a day of community impact, providing resources to fight this epidemic. To help fuel a sense of urgency to find solutions, we are zeroing in on the financial cost of this issue to society. A team of economists, led by Dr. Oleg Smirnov, is preparing to release an economic impact analysis of the opioid crisis in our region that shows in one year alone, the cost of the opioid epidemic to the Toledo area is $1.52 billion. This crisis is so costly to so many people. That's why it's vitally important that the university's leadership, resources, and unique role in the community are dedicated to finding solutions. Our partnership with the internationally renowned Toledo Museum of Art continues to grow with our new focus on visual literacy. Together, we're training a new generation of effective communicators who engage all of their sensory skills to help us better understand the world. We talk about it as the ability to speak visual, the ability to find, interpret, evaluate, use, and create images and visual media. The university is fortunate to have dedicated alumni, donors, and supporters whose generosity helps bring students here and launches them into fulfilling careers. In fiscal 2019, so far, 8,800 people have made generous financial contributions to the University of Toledo, which means we are on pace to increase the total number of donors for the fifth straight year.
And thanks to private support from these types of gifts, more than 11,000 hardworking students have received scholarships this academic year. The new Center for Alumni and Donor Engagement, made possible with a generous gift from Welltower, is the new location for our foundation team members. And we strive to be responsive to the needs of our industry partners, designing curriculum that provides a talented and capable workforce for today and tomorrow. The College of Engineering is collaborating with Dana Incorporated to offer graduate certificate and degree programs that meet emerging demand in mechatronics, skills in developing the controls, programming, and hardware needed for electric vehicles. The College of Business and Innovation is meeting the dynamic changing needs of industry. The new Executive Master of Sales Leadership welcomes its first class of students in the fall, giving sales professionals an edge when seeking to advance their careers. And the new Master of Applied Business Analytics, proposed to start next year, will help meet the growing demand for professionals with the analytical skills to apply real-time solutions to business challenges. To meet the demand for nurses in Ohio and across the nation, and better prepare them as leaders in the evolving healthcare environment, the College of Nursing will offer an RN to BSN program that is the first of its kind among Ohio institutions. We're providing the flexibility working nurses need to advance their careers through our competency-based education program. It is self-paced online learning that's personalized, accessible, and convenient. These are just the latest examples of our forward-thinking degree programs. The University of Toledo will continue to be a step ahead when developing the new programs that meet and exceed the needs of our world economy. We couldn't highlight everything, but today we heard proof of our transformative culture and the exciting new directions we're headed. Last year, I spoke about growing rocket pride and strengthening the university's brand. I'm proud to announce that in the coming months, you'll see and hear our core values being reinforced and celebrated as we launch a new brand on July 1st. These efforts are focused on creating a renewed sense of enthusiasm and pride for our university, building stronger, stronger brand loyalty and affinity through our personal stories and creating a nationally recognized brand that is bold, confident, and aspirational. We must all tell our story proudly. Who are we at the University of Toledo? We are Toledoans, we are global citizens. We work collaboratively to solve problems and achieve our purpose. We are rockets who empower and prepare future leaders. Just as the stories of our dedicated, tenacious people demonstrated earlier, I challenge each of you, as a part of the University of Toledo community, to live our brand attributes each day. Be focused. Set ambitious goals and be determined to achieve them. Be inquisitive. Embrace curiosity and exploration. Be supportive. Lift others up. We're in this together to change students' lives, the trajectory of our Toledo community, and the world at large. Be innovative. Drive to do better, think smarter, and achieve greater. Be determined. Our challenges fuel our success. Don't let anything stand in your way. Be community-minded. Believe in the strength of collaboration. Be impactful. Embrace our mission as a leader and influencer across many specializations. As you've seen today at the University of Toledo, we're a community inspired to help our students succeed through inclusive collaboration, scholarly research, and hands-on experience. We are committed to improving the human condition in the region and throughout the world. We are changing lives through the work that we do. We are shaping the future. We are fueling tomorrows. Thank you.